first of all, the reason people are so desperate about this is they're drawing on their own historic memories to start with. Okay, so this has not come out of nowhere, this isn't new, this has got a long historic antecedent which we haven't had time to look at, but there you are. The second part is, going right back to empire, the whole history of empire. The second uh, issue, however, is that these little diagrams uh, are actually acts of enormous roots for science. That's the truth. In which the nature of what is now called history is shaped in what you see and what you experience and what your community lives through and what the lens of what you see is. Because what it also does is rapidly polarise again in what has already been there deep for a long time, where people live. Every time violence turns up again, people have to run back to their own side because they're vulnerable to vision. So if you live here, inside the Nationalist Catholic community, history, evidential, factual based, and every story you ever tell is of how these people came in and how we had to resist. Does that make sense? If you live here, however, it is how we faced a mortal threat and how we had to defend ourselves. Does that make sense? First. So history becomes, second of all, this leaves, although it's individuals that killed, in close knit communities, this leaves a, a legacy for the whole community. The communities have to be bound to these stories because our people got killed. And actually, the impact of all of those things close up is far greater than the impact of these things far away. So, the impact of, of what is happening to you in your own community is, say, a factor of three greater than your willingness to acknowledge what's happening on the other side because you don't know those people. You don't see the group. You just know Hello. The, um, so the, the bottom line position here is the nature of what constitutes memory <laughs> and how memory is constituted and what you're brought in and who tells it and what is the story of my family and what is the real experience, lived experience of our community is radically reinforced by this experience. And the bottom line is in our context neither wins so decisively that one can be eliminated. Both histories remain sitting side by side even though there's an apparent Developed. You understand? And both people are, even when there is quiet, people have to remain vigilant. They're still watching. This is tranquility or a truce, not peace. And you know that because you just say, listen, we can't let these people near harm, frankly. Because if they do, get you know what they'll do with it. We'll be rumbled into the United Ireland before you can say, Jack Robinson, right? So we will not keep them out of power. We'll keep these people away from power. So make sure they don't get too close to any information that they can serve. Keep them out of high positions in the civil service and the police. And that's not discrimination. That is wisdom. Keep them at arm's length. Because they're out to get you. Just because apparently they're heavy. <laughs> this side. You're now going up in these stories and you face effectively a ceiling on what you can do or you don't have the networks to get to the staff and you are constantly being second class across all the distribution of houses and all of these things. These people say, not discrimination. How can you even talk in those terms? This is, uh, discrimination doesn't describe it. <laughs> this is, goes to the fundamental structural catastrophe that is Northern Ireland. Do you understand? <laughs> it is right in the heart. And the problem is, both can be true simultaneously. <laughs> both. So you can discriminate with a good conscience if you're here, if you think these people are enemies now to get you. And out here you can say, this is further evidence of exactly what we're talking about. The fundamental that we have a feeling about the place, approach of union. Okay? Now, so that's number one. The next part I want to say is this is, Everybody actually, the, the real difficulty you have here in politics is everybody agrees on who the problem is. Everybody does. The problem is them. <laughs> now, anybody who's done psychoanalysis knows that the worst position you get into is somebody else's fault because then you can't actually move. <laughs> you have to turn it around to the point of what is it I can do within this to make a change. But if the problem is them, the answer is, I can do nothing until they stop. 
<laughs> the fundamental problem is how they're acting. So there's a fundamental problem, which is one, I, uh, I, even though I want this to stop, I can do nothing about it without risking my, the entire future of my community. So every, every stands there. Every stands there. Nothing happens. <laughs> because the people who have to do the changing aren't them. Okay? The further aspect of that is everybody believes that the cause lies outside themselves. In other words, <laughs> what we did, we only did because they did it to us. Or, we would not be bad people if we weren't facing this mortal threat, on the other hand. We would not be supporting the kind of violence that the IRA had to do, except that we had no alternative. We had no choice. Do you understand? And so fundamentally, again, cause lies somewhere else. So the real danger, which is, nobody is responsible. <laughs> There's lots of things, lots of killing happening, but nobody, you can't find anybody who thinks it's their fault. Yeah. So it's another issue, which is <laughs> that cause lies externally, always. And cause always trumps the act. In other words, we did do this, yes, we can even agree we did it, or we did do this. But the bigger question is what came out of first. <laughs> so I can regret <coughs> that I had to do this, or this. I regret it, but I haven't any remorse. Do you understand what's the difference between regret and remorse? <laughs> I regret it. And boy, do people hear it. Yes, you regret it. I'm an unfortunate casualty in a war was I caused. <laughs> <laughs> Paradoxically, of course, in the causal circle, and this is the truth, if this is right, and these are linked acts, in other words, these are responsive actions, then if somebody's killed here, and you trace it backwards, yes, there's somebody who did it, but I only did it because somebody on my side did it. So ultimately, I'm killed by my own thing. In a circle, it must be true. <laughs> so we're the victims of our own stupidity. As well as a friend. <laughs> However, when you're sitting in the middle of this, you don't see this. The very, very last bit, and I will stop now, I know I have to stop, is this, is, and we leave it here, is, the problem, therefore, of partition is that you can reverse it, uh, but you still have some of these problems that are lying on the other side. How do you deal with it on the other side? Because the relationship that this has created is created in a certain way in Northern Ireland, but we also know is that in other circumstances where the imperial people were kicked out, as in Czechoslovakia, or as in Poland, it, <coughs> you had similar uh, very profound problems going on on the other side there too. Now, the other, the very, and this is just one point is, the biggest problem of all of this is, because they're the cause, because we are fighting a just war, everybody believes what they're about is justice. We are, even where we're not the immediate victims, the structural victims of the situation. In other words, we are, the, even when we're violent, it's because of them, we are the victims. We are the victims. Okay. Because everybody believes they're a victim, because we believe that our cause is essentially just, even where we might not, we might quibble with some of the kind of marginal cases that have been done for us. Here's the problem. Peace means many of the abused having to do a deal with those abusers before we're sure they stopped. And if peace, that is not how we treat child abuse. <laughs> that the abused have to live in an equal relationship with their abusers. But anybody, the only just piece, as far as I'm concerned, is that the abusers are held accountable for what they did, that they are, that they stop, that they are destroyed. You understand? In other words, the only just piece, the only way to reconcile justice with peace is through victory. <laughs> and anybody who's selling you a peace which is not equal to victory is not equal to justice. And so anybody trying in the middle of this to make peace short of victory is always looking over their shoulder at people